know, the last time I told a story here, um, I was just by myself, and uh, I, I just want to thank Maureen and Kathy. I, I just kind of wa I walked home because I drank too much, and, uh, <laughs> but I was just kind of like floating until I fell asleep, and then life came back. So. <laughs> My family has a cabin on the Wisconsin River my whole life, and uh, this is a story in two parts. Part one. I was just a kid. I was sitting on a beach below the river's bank with my family. I stared at inner tubes and canoes floating down the river southbound. It was sunny. You know, if, if you left your feet in the water long enough, Teeny tiny minnows would kiss your toes, but you had to stay really still. Gary, will you run up to the cabin and get the copper tone? It's on the bed in the first bedroom, asked my mom. Actually, she had to ask me three times because I was watching my toes getting caressed. <laughs> my cousin Jody had made a declaration that he didn't want to be called Jody anymore. His name was going to be Joe. He thought Jody sounded like a girl's name. I never knew a girl named Jody, so I kept calling him Jody. <laughs> Jody picked up a clam the size of a good helping of mashed potatoes. He squeezed it at me. He shot clam piss at my face. <laughs> we held a special bond. So. <laughs> it was time to get up and either slug Jody or get the copper tone from the cabin. <laughs> I forgot about the silence of the minnows. I trudged up the hot sand and opened the screen door. I knew somebody would be mad because I was putting wet sand on the linoleum. I didn't care. I opened the curtain for the bedroom and a very naked Aunt Fran, Jody's mom, started screaming at me. <clears throat> She didn't look anything like the centerfold <laughs> that my friend uh, Jackie, his name was really Jackie Shine, showed me on the 4th of July. She looked like a chubby person under construction <laughs> who was not happy being viewed at by a 12-year-old. I don't know what she said. Whatever she said sounded loud and cold-blooded. <laughs> I had seen a very angry, naked woman, and I told my mom I couldn't find the copper tone. <laughs> this is part two. <laughs> Just as disturbing as the first time. <laughs> This was like 1972. It was the last day of our Labor Day summer vacation. We had shared the cottage with my Aunt Fran's family. This was like the year after. All the kids besides my cousin Jody and I stayed back. Our moms were uptown at the laundromat. Jody, Lindsay, my 13-year-old cousin, thought I was cool just because I was 15. He was right. <laughs> Our dads were napping on opposing couches, enjoying box fans blowing August air on their torsos. When our moms got back, we all had three and a half hour trips back to the suburbs of Chicago in big, ugly station wagons. Come on. You know, I'm nervous tonight, so if you heckle, just be more gentle. <laughs> Yeah, we, we have feelings too, right? So. Hey Gary, let's ask if we can enter to down to Bob's Riverside. Bob's Riverside was like a bar and a boat launching place two miles down the river. It was a boss idea. It swirled in my head, the Wisconsin River and us. We could avoid the, the chores of dragging out suitcases to the cars. Let's ask, I said. Jody did. He asked his dad, who wasn't as asleep, really, or as mean as my dad. <laughs> I had a gut feeling my dad would say no, 
But my uncle said yes. He'd pick us up in a couple hours at Bob's Riverside. We rolled two semi-truck inner tubes out of the boathouse. We didn't think about wearing t-shirts or putting copper tone on. <laughs> we followed the tubes as they spun down the bank into the river's channel. The river was all ours. Nothing was going to stop us now. I just added that, Kathy. <laughs> We put our butts in the middle of the tubes. We gave each, 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 we gave each other big shit-faced grins. It was cool. No siblings, no adults. It felt like freedom. We let the river's current grab us. Our hands easily paddled us away from the tall poison ivy on the shore. Another reference from Terry. I didn't know you were gonna do that. So. We were quiet enough. So the turtles stayed on their logs while we, while we went down the river. Tiny eddies that looked like the way water goes down the bathtub drain surrounded us. Sometimes I wondered if a turtle or some gargantuan fish might take a bite out of my butt in the middle of the tube, but I never had any trouble from the river's residents. We watched with envy as a vested fisherman pulled a bass out with his fishing rod, and he hollered out, for some reason, he said, did you know that smallmouth bass are men and largemouth bass are female? <laughs> we didn't know that. <laughs> anyway, he got it in the boat. Jody was yapping about a song that WLS played every 27 minutes or so, the lyrics were about a guy looking for a lover who wouldn't blow his cover. <laughs> Take it easy. I could see Jody's shoulders getting redder all the time. I assumed I was sunburning on my shoulders, my nose. I didn't care. This was an almost perfect day. The bridge marked the halfway point to Bob's Riverside. The shade under the bridge was a quiet, great place to see if loud cussing might echo. It didn't. <laughs> But it was fun to scream out things like bat shit, bullshit, shit shit. Since we're in Wisconsin, badger shit. And of course, duck billed platypus shit. Look here, said Jody, and he pointed. Where? I asked, because his inner tube was spinning like a Motown 45 in a record player. There and he put his feet down in the sand and pointed to a sandbar. Because I'm from Chicago, I guess I measured everything in city blocks, approximately one block away. There were three girls removing their shirts, their shorts, their bras, their panties. There was a guy taking off his clothes too. He was kind of gross. <laughs> The day developed into a mental photograph. I was flashing pictures with every blink. I wanted to store this film into a safety deposit box in my brain storage unit. I had a lot of room up there. <laughs> I stood up in my tube and I stared at true nudity. Everyone I knew except for Aunt Fran pretty much kept their clothes on. <laughs> There was only one thing to do, remain quiet and observe. We did for a long, long time. Let's get closer, I suggested. I, I felt like if we talked about this phenomenon, it would fade out. We tiptoed closer to true nudity from half a block away. I could hear the Beach Boys fanning out a surfing song from a transistor radio. I saw sights that are always hidden unless your friend's father hid a Playboy under his mattress and your friend somehow discovered it and showed it to you. I could see boobs. I saw their fannies dancing. 
I couldn't make out their faces, but who cared? <laughs> I've gotten more sensitive lately. <laughs> I, I wish I hadn't seen the naked guy's dick. I was thinking he was going to get sunburn on it. Nobody was applying lotion. <laughs> I was thinking we should get back to the float, but I couldn't bring myself to leave. Jody didn't want to go either. This was an unsuspected surprise. The nudies didn't look our way. We watched them walk, run, splash, swim, play frisbee. They huddled up at one point. <clears throat> I wondered what naked people talked about. Were they planning on what they were going to do when they put their clothes back on? <laughs> Jody said that we should declare the sand bear from now on as Bear Ass Island. <laughs> I seconded his, emo his motion. We started to walk our tubes all around the sandbar so we wouldn't appear, I don't know how to pronounce this word, but conspicuous. <laughs> We went around there six times. <laughs> Very discreetly. <laughs> we, f <laughs> we finally started back on the float to Bob's. When we were about two blocks south, Jody yelled out, want to get lucky? They apparently didn't want to get lucky. <laughs> we laughed. And we giggled all the way. We rolled our tubes up to the boat launch at Bob's. My dad's fishing boat was parked there. My sister Diane was sitting on the front seat of the boat with a Tiger Beat magazine. <laughs> what happened to you guys, she asked. What? We both said. You've been gone for five hours. It only takes two hours <laughs> to float. So? So Dad is really pissed. Oh. I looked up and saw a red-faced father. It was like he was on fire. I began to watch his mouth talk about how irresponsible I was. I was a poor role model for poor Jody. He'll never get over this. So. He said my mother was worried, wondered if we had drowned. I opened up this special hole in between my ears and let the words flow right through my head. <laughs> I, I keep that off open for supervisors. <laughs> Jody was probably hearing a dress rehearsal performance that his parents were waiting to act out for him. I imagine it would be called, You Little Shit. <laughs> We got into the boat, Dad stuck his, his cap in the river water and slapped the wet hat back on his head. Jody and I put the inner tubes in the boat. We sat on the seat over the live box and stared at our feet. Dad pulled the cord to start the oven road, and the cord came out. <laughs> Dad had a new reason to swear everything was my fault. I wished he would go up and have a cold beer at Bob's, but he made us stay in the boat while he fixed it. It felt like another five hours, but this time with really lousy scenery. I assumed he must have driven his boat past us at Bear Ass Island when we had been circling it and missed it. Dad finally fixed the cord, put it in go, and we were on our way. Jody and I stared at the inner tubes between the seats, we shared glances at each other and smirked. We both, we both knew from ricochet glances and grimaces that our crime was easily worth any penance a parent could last shot. 
Diane was reading a story about David Cassidy in her magazine. And out of the blue, my dad tip, tapped me on the shoulder. He pointed knowingly at Bear Ass Island. There were now eight nudies on the sand. I nudged Jody. He looked too. I cast a look at dad and he winked. He slowed down the boat and we all enjoyed the view.